Okay, so uh, there's the audio station, the cutting implements. Uh, what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna cut some valleys today that are gonna go up there because this thing is a four-sided gable in a valley. Here, one's gonna go right there. And in case you're wondering, it's a little smoky here today. This is great. I was, uh, <laughs> I was lifting this bitch up on the sawhorses and it's, it's kind of slicky and it slid off the sawhorse on the end and, uh, had my saw down on the ground, upside down like this, and it landed right on there and broke it. It's all bent now. Ain't that a mother? Well, I'm gonna go get another saw, I guess. Okay, new saw. Same saw, same as it ever was. End blades. Yep, bent, broken. Son of a gun, man. Look at that. So I'm gonna unplug this now. Being the uh, silly person that I am, I I tried it. <laughs> I pulled the trigger to see what's happening and uh, it made all those shiny little pieces of magnesium. So yeah, I'm gonna go over to the truck and uh, bust out the new one. I didn't know that I was gonna get a, a new box. So that's cool. Dun dun dun! There it is. All right, I gotta put, I gotta take that blade off and put on a Diablo, and then uh, go forward from there. Excellent. Okay, so they had these uh, five packs on sale at Home Depot for twenty six dollars for five blades. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I read that wrong? Three pack. <laughs> okay, well, so it's not quite the deal that I thought it was. I need to really look at the big numbers. I probably saw the small number. So three blades, $26. I thought I was getting five for 26. Yeah, silly me. Whatever. They're Diablo, they're really good. So I'm gonna put this new Makita blade in this little house. And there we go. I gotta get after this, man. I gotta, I gotta cut some valleys. So I'm gonna do that next. I hope this has been as entertaining for you as it is for me. <laughs> I did not expect to break my saw <laughs> out here. I'm not even getting paid to do this. I'm just doing this for fun. And uh, it's already costing me money. I'm already going backwards. So the lesson is park your saw <laughs> under some kind of protection so that Murphy tries to get you again. You're not buying two saws in one day, not just one. So that's the new home for the saw underneath somewhat of a structural A-frame. Now what I'm gonna do is lay out this valley. I've confirmed a few things. I've confirmed that the span of the building, whoops, is 23 11 and three quarter. That's confirmed. The ridge is three and a half inches. So, come on, focus. So what you do is you take the span minus three and a half inches, divide by two, gets your run. That gives you your rafter lengths, which turn out to be that length right there, 16, nine, uh, and zero, in, zero sixteenths. And that leaves me with a 20 foot six and three sixteenths valley. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that out right now. Okay, I'm gonna share some, uh, I'm just archiving what I know, um, just because. I could be dead tomorrow. I could have a board fall on me like it did on my saw. <laughs> Anyways, so you see words right here. You kind of want all the words to be upright. You don't want to install something upside down, but you also have to check, is there a crown? I don't know if this camera's gonna catch that. I just don't know. Anyways, this is how it works. Most of the time, engineered lumber, you just put it in with the words the proper way up. The first thing you need to do is, if you look right there, you'll see I'm on the 12 
hip valley. And from the long point of the board, go ahead and draw a line. Because what you're gonna do, this is if, if the end of your board isn't all boogered up, you measure how thick your board is. So what is that? Like inch, whoops, inch and three quarter, right? It's LVL. You're gonna memorize stuff like that. What you wanna do is you wanna go half the distance either way from this line. So you're gonna make a mark, another line at seven and an eighth this way and seven and an eighth this way. So I'm gonna do that now. And this tool here is calibrated. So I'm gonna make some marks and I'm gonna turn this off and I'll be right back. Lines, there's one from the true corner. There's a line seven and eighths to this side. And then the other one is seven and eighths the other way. So that, let's just, here, make it easy. Inch and three quarter. Right about there. Hold the damn tape steady. All right, so anyways. Now what's gonna happen is I have a, what people call a sidewinder. So I'm gonna be cutting a 45 degree cut number one that direction and then a 45 degree bevel cut number two this direction. If you're using a worm drive, your blade goes the other way. So just switch these arrows around. You'll be cutting your first cut this way and you'll come back and cut your second cut that way. All right. So it just depends on, on the tool you're using. Now I'm gonna go ahead and mark out 20 foot six and 3 16 and I can hook the end of the board because I've laid it out like this. All right, I gotta put this down because I need my other hand. Okay, 20 foot six and 3 16 And I drew a line down the back of the board right there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna reproduce those same three lines down here. And that middle line is where you're gonna put the height above plate that you're using for your rafters. So that's coming next. Okay, so there's the lines. The uh, center line right here, our height above plate is six and three eighths inches. So that's gonna be from the long point of that diamond. And when you're, when you're working a valley, the edges are too low. And so you plane everything to the center and so when you bring your jack rafters, they're gonna actually stick up a little bit and they're gonna plane down to the center of where the valley is. And that's your hap, your height above plate. Now, so don't cut this end until you've cut that end and double check your work. Always, always, always. All right, there's the diamond cut. And you end up with uh, the part that goes to the top of the hip or the valley. And then I'm gonna just double check, make sure that I'm not off. Yeah, see that? I'm off by 3 16 so I'm gonna, I'm gonna make that adjustment right now. And that's why you check. So I did not cut that other end as precise as I would have liked to. Huh, on second uh, thought, I'm dead on. So what happened was the uh, that little slot on my tape hooked into the long point and it brought my tape that much farther to where I lost an eighth just in the measurement. So I just went and checked. So no, we're good. We're cutting this bad boy. But still, always check your work. And if something doesn't show up, figure it out. There's that little pokey piece through the hole. So, I'm gonna hook on like that and let's see if it'll just stay hooked while we go check. Yes. Three sixteenths. Yow. Dead on, balls accurate. Let's check this. Well, let's see. It's holding the camera thing, so that should be six and three eighths. Come on, crazy. It, this gotta be this music. This music's got me going. All right, yep. Okay, so now I'm gonna lay this out. That's uh, 
little trick I like to do to help make sure I'm accurate. I, uh, I wrote software to do this on a normal roof, but I'm pulling everything from a center common and working out from the middle. So it's a little different than what I have programmed. So I had to do this one custom last night. So we're gonna see if it works. Oh, I hate the pressure. This one, I made some labeling decisions on the fly. The main ridge that goes all the way across here is three and a half. And then these off, these little ridges are an inch and a half. So these jack rafters are longer by like an inch because they have to take up two inches of difference for the skinnier ridge. And that also meant that the skinnier ridge has to be higher than the three and a half ridge so that everything planes correctly. So that's, that's what that little diagram right there shows how to place all that. But um, that means that the, the jacks that touch the main are different than the jacks that touch this front ridge over the garage door. And so what that translates to is they still line up on the valley, but on this side, this first one is one foot eight and 14 sixteenths. And then on this side, it's one foot seven and seven sixteenths. So that's going up to the uh, main ridge. And this other side, these jacks are going up to the garage bridge. So there we go. I think I'm ready to lean this up and test fit it, make sure it works. Okay, I don't know if this is recording because it's probably Bluetoothing down to the radio, but anyways, 31 there. And then, uh, hang on a sec. Bumping the ridge and eyeballing straight down that face of the board because the ridge is, well, you know what? I come up here. There you go. 31 there. So these little jacks are on the layouts. As you can see, I put a 12 common on there instead of the hip angle. So I'm going to go grab my uh, hip angle square and fix that because that's just not right. You just can't. So there you go. It's been, uh, it's been a while. But these fit nice. I do these valleys production style. Find your center mark. Make this the thickness of the valley, inch and three quarters. So it's seven eighths both sides of that center mark. The reason why you want that center mark is you can hook on here and pull your length because that's going to be the tip of the diamond when you cut this. So do that. Pull the length of your rafter. A correction your valley or your hip and this little uh, crow's foot mark right here is uh, the center line again so we're going to reproduce that down here with the uh, 12 and 17 hip angle 16.97 to be actually square root of 288 to be exact yep nerds framing scary stuff okay so there's the first layout and then I just laid out all those. Now, I like, uh, I really like YouTube channels where if people make a mistake, they own it. So I'm gonna own mine. I, uh, I did the layouts on that very first valley up there. I used, <laughs> I used that square down there. I wasn't thinking because you know, jacks, everything is a 12 and 12, but I forgot if it's touching the hip, like if it's part of the hip, it has to be on the hip angle. The jack is not part of the hip. It gets to be on the 12 angle. So anyways, um, I put two little test jacks in up there and they fit really nice. So there's that. Okay, this is the main side. Main as in um, the thicker main ridge, the three and a half inch ridge. And then I'm gonna flip these over and lay out the corresponding two by 10 ridge jacks. All right, got these remaining three valleys cut, laid out. In the old days, we never used to lay out the hips or valleys, but since I can, I do, because it just kind of helps in case something's off. 
you know like if I cut a rafter wrong and it doesn't land where the layout is and then the guy up there just nails it in and now it's out of layout it's crooked we don't want that and there's the uh, the main valley that's in there so we gotta lean these up it's getting old okay so another thing I'm remembering is I would do the uh, ridge cuts and make them backwards to each other only so that I could cut the same bevel the same from the same side of the board this way then that way then this way then that way and end up with opposite beveled pairs if I remember correctly we're gonna find out okay I'm going to say something controversial there are times when you need to pin back your guard this is one of those times um, the guard when you cut a, a bevel starting from this side of the board the guard doesn't want to get out of your way and i need to keep one hand on the board and drive the saw with the other hand so this is the only time to do it today and as soon as i'm done i'll take the pencil out of there so there you go okay so there's what i was talking about bevel 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 and they're all from the same side of the board and oh look the guard is back down because I, as an adult, made a temporary decision to make the tool more practical and safer to conclude the function. And still got all my hand, my fingers, all my digits. So I'm very careful. And so you can, you can do it your way. If you feel that um, that's wrong, that's fine. It's America or whatever you're watching this from. Uh, but all this safety first bullshit life is full of risks and uh if everybody did safety first they'd never leave their bed but then they would die from like some kind of scabies or something but anyway so um there are times when you have to take a little more risk in order to accomplish something in a safer manner and that comes with experience of knowing when to do it like you don't run with your guard pinned back 100 percent of the time that's just not cool or safe. All right, so we got uh, the 9115 jacks cut, and now I have to cut the uh, opposing jacks that go to the 2x10 ridge. And then we'll start putting some valleys in. Hey guys, one other suggestion. Um, where this crosses over the board, make that a zero and then come this way in inches or millimeters, whatever y'all want. I would recommend inches for me because this is my height above plate right here. Six and three eighths on a two by eight or four and three eighths on a two by six. So if this was calibrated with inches, somehow some crazy, and then this also is, make this also have uh, dimensions. And then the other thing is that 45, It'd be cool if those lines came down in the curve so they line up with the arrow so I don't have to look straight down because I'm off a little bit. If you can see, I need, to, I need to tap that way just the slightest bit 